All right, so check this out. At this point, you should be pretty comfortable with creating variables for, for primitive strings and numbers, right? Uh, name equals John Doe, age equals 25. But now, what about when the variable should, should contain, so to speak, um, a collection of things, like a list of your favorite books? How exactly would we do that? I'll show you how. All right, so let's say you want a section of your website for recommended books. So maybe you'd have an unordered list. And just for fun, I've chosen three different books from three different decades that I would actually recommend. And I'll show you these. So we have um, from Philip Dick, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? This is what spawned Blade Runner. It's very interesting. Makes you think. Uh, next, this was, uh, well, Stephen King, The Langoliers. This was originally a short story in one of his... Um, compilation books. I don't remember which one it was, but then they extracted it into its own release. Super, super good. Uh, imagine waking up in a plane and 90% of the people on the plane have disappeared, but the plane didn't land. They try to figure out what happened there. And then finally, of course, from this decade is Hail Mary, which is one of the best books I've read in many, many years. Okay, so let's say we have those three books. Uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Next up, we have the Langoliers, and then finally, Hail Mary. Okay, so now our job is to make this dynamic. Remember, in real life, things like this will often be stored within uh, a database. Here's John's recommendations, or here's Sarah's recommendations. All of those are stored in a database. So yeah, how would we do this? Well, once again, we could open up PHP directly within our body tag. And yeah, what would be a good variable name for our list of books? Well, I said books, right? So why don't we call it books? But yeah, at this point, we've learned that we can do things like this, but I instead wanted to represent many book names. So what do we reach for in that case? And the answer is an array. So think of an array as the programming equivalent of a folder. It's a way to take a, a group of things or a list of things and put them together in a folder. And then if you want to move all of those things from one place to, to another place, you just pick up the folder and you carry it, right? The same basic principle is true for arrays. I create an array using this uh, notation. Open bracket, closed bracket. Now I can store each of these titles as strings. There's one. Next, the Langoliers. And then finally, Hail Mary. All right, cool. So now I have a single variable that represents a list of recommended books. The next step is to loop over that list and for each item, display a list item that includes the name of the book. So here's how we do that in PHP. Let's do this. Open up PHP and I will say for each books as and now when I'm looping over this array, how do I want to represent or refer to each item within that array? Well, how about name or book? Anything you want. Singular is fine. And then just like with conditionals in the last episode, we open up braces. Okay, and I'll close PHP at the bottom. So now the way this works is for however many items we have in this array, I will trigger all of the logic that is contained between these braces. So if you want to pause and think to yourself, well, how many times will I, let's do this, echo uh, a list item that says hello. Okay, so if I were to run this in the browser, uh, pause for a second and think, how many hellos will I see? Okay, well, as you can imagine, we will see three hellos. Let's come back, give it a refresh, and sure enough, I get three because there's three items here. If I were to add another one here, then of course we would loop over it four times and we'll have four hellos, all right? So let's bring this back. And now let's replace uh, the text here with the name of the book. So I'll show you a couple ways to do this. We could once again use concatenation. So in this case, I'm saying, okay, I want to render a list item and then the name of the book and then a closing list item. And that should in fact do the trick, pretty cool. Um, but of course, as we learned an episode or two ago, we could also just inline all of this. I could say echo, open a list item, then do the name of the book, and then close it all in one go. Come back, refresh, and very good.
But now a quick little note, I don't know if we covered this, but imagine for whatever reason, you need to add that little trademark symbol at the end of the book name, something like that. But notice how my editor immediately starts complaining at me. And that's because now it's trying to find a variable called book TM. And of course that doesn't exist. So yeah, of course the issue is I want that TM to occur immediately after the name of the book. So I could add a space here, but in this situation, I don't want that. I don't want a space between it. So what do we do in situations like this? Uh, well, of course you could reach for concatenation or uh, you'll often see this in the wild. You can wrap the name of the variable within braces and that sort of silos the variable. Nope, this is the thing that I want you to render. And then everything after it uh, will not be included as part of that variable name. So this would be a way that we could solve it. All right, just a little aside, but something you should be aware of. For now, I'll bring it back to book. Looks good. Okay, so for little examples like this, what we've come up with is perfectly fine. But yeah, as you can imagine, in some situations, your list item will contain its own set of HTML. Maybe it houses a div with headings and a sublist and anchor tags and things like that. And I think what you'll find is when you start trying to render all of that as part of an echo string, you know, as you can imagine here, very quickly it starts to get super messy. So for this reason, there is a shorthand for loops and I'll show you how it looks. Let's start from scratch. Open up PHP and yeah, for each books as book, but this time, instead of opening up a curly brace, we're gonna use an alternative syntax, sort of a shorthand that you will mostly see when working with views or, or, or HTML, as you see here. And that shorthand or alternative syntax is a colon. Okay, so let's close PHP so that I can return to HTML. Hello there. And then we need some way to delineate where the end of the for each should occur. So at the very bottom, I will open up PHP again and write end for each. All right, so if we switch back, we should once again get three hello there's, and we do. Okay, so I think you'll find whenever you need to build up complex HTML fragments, this alternative syntax for for each is 100% the way to go. And yeah, it's not limited to for each. You can also use it for conditionals. It's the exact same uh, syntax. Okay, so now let's just update this by opening PHP, echoing out the book name. And if I switch back and refresh, we're good to go here. But also don't forget, you learned about short echo tags, right? So you could instead just say equal book and then close it out and that would work as well. And once again, this is the approach that I would usually take. So give it a refresh and we still get the same thing. All right, so you're making pretty good progress now. You've now learned that a variable can house, so to speak, a collection of things. And that's specifically what an array is for. It's for containing a collection of things. Uh, maybe that collection could be names, a collection of names. It could be a collection of numbers. It could be a collection or a list, if you prefer, a list of uh, usernames, a list of book names, a list of, of popular tweets, anything like that could go in a primitive array. And then you use the for each syntax to loop over each item within that array and proceed however you need to.